NVIDIA is trying to sell you an 8 gigabyte graphics card uh, in 2025. Also, Namco just dropped an arcade gun that's basically a time machine. Reddit is suing an AI company for stealing all of your memes. And someone already ripped apart the Switch 2. And yeah, it's got a few problems. Welcome to the dumbest timeline ever. You know the drill. Let's get into it. Guys, AMD won the mid-range with the 9060 XT, but NVIDIA has their target set on budget builders next month. Check this out. Here it is. This is the card we've all been waiting for, isn't it? The uh, RTX 5050. We finally got some news on this budget budget card from NVIDIA. They are reportedly preparing the 5050 desktop GPU. Forget this. Release in July. Yesterday, we got some rumors about the 5050. Board partners started talking about this new card coming out. Uh, this is not the laptop version. We're getting this desktop GPU, the 5050. NVIDIA is planning it in uh, just a few weeks. They'll start talking about the launch. Let's take a look at specs, though, because that's really what we're most interested in in this card. How bad is it going to be? I guess not bad. Every graphics card is a good fit for the right person and, most importantly, the right price, which is, oh, we'll see what happens here. The latest specs uh, remain unchanged from some previous reports on the 5050. This is going to use the GB207 GPU, 2560 CUDA cores, so a third less than the 5060. But check this out. We're going back in time, boys and girls, on the VRAM on this card. This is going to be using uh, GDDR6 memory. 8 gigabytes of it to be specific. So no GDDR7 in this bad boy, uh, like you're getting in 5060 and up. Uh, NVIDIA planning for a July release, and of course there's gonna be a laptop variant of this card. Separately, I've heard a rumor that NVIDIA is exploring use of those three gigabyte memory modules for the 50 series cards, uh, and the, obviously the 5080 Super coming with 24 gigs of memory will be using those modules for sure to get there. That's how the math works on that one. Uh, the same upgrade might come to lower end models as well, potentially addressing one of NVIDIA's biggest criticisms, launching eight gig cards in 2014. What are we doing here? NVIDIA is basically recycling their mid-tier playbook. You strip down a 5060, the slap on eight gigs of RAM, a VRAM, a call it a day, GDDR6. Um, no one does it better than NVIDIA. You know what? Um, the breakdown on this card, when you look at the specs compared to everything else, this card, it's not trying to compete. It's just trying to exist. And you know what? Maybe that's fine for a you know, $180 you know, rig that's playing Valorant. That, that Maybe that's okay for someone out there. My question for you, though, would you still would you buy an 8 gigabyte card in 2025? You know, is that officially a no-go for you now? Let me know in the comments. I'm curious where the cutoff is for you guys. Breaking news, we've got an update from Benchlife. Uh, they're reporting that NVIDIA is now considering switching to GDDR7 memory for the 5050, just as they did for the mobile version. So who knows what the memory is going to look like on this card. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, they may stick with the GDDR7. What I am most interested in is what price this card comes in at. And I'm not talking about MSRP. I'm talking about the real price. What, what's it going to be when you swipe your card? That's all anyone cares about. Where is this going to land? Let's find out. It's uh, just around the corner. Aha, look, there's been a leak. Oh, a leak of this card. It's right next to this Asus Tough Gaming GeForce RTX 5060. And to the right of it, ah, yes. The Acme GeForce RTX 5058 gigabyte brick edition. Careless NVIDIA, I can't believe they leaked that so early. NVIDIA, 3090 performance in a 5050 for only $249. Also, no press samples, just use our marketing slides. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think about this, an eight gigabyte card in 2025, what are we doing here? Holy cow, Namco is bringing back arcade vibes uh, with their new controller. This thing is straight out of the 90s and is a guy who is 35 years old. Uh, I know the 90s, baby. And this is it. Let's take a look at what, what's going on here. This is a uh, light gun support. It's coming to LCD monitors uh, with a new gun controller uh, that comes bundled with uh, Namco titles via Kickstarter. So this is kind of cool because essentially this uh, device uses a camera instead of infrared. Um, and if the latency is low, this thing might actually be uh, kind of cool. Uh, this is a Kickstarter project. And so let's take a look at the video here. It's kind of cool. Daddy, daddy, I got a gun controller. I just plug and play it. It's that easy. And it comes with all these games. Look, it really does work. Look, that's a family that's just shooting their TV. You know what? This is kind of cool because everyone remembers like Duck Hunt. 
from back in the day on the old Nintendo, a cool interactive piece of gaming that you could bring to your home. Well, they're bringing this back, which is kind of fun. It works with modern TVs. It's plug and play. The family looks like they're having a great time playing it. I mean, look at these guys. Look at that. The dad is just having a ball. Let's get into the camera on this thing, which is kind of interesting because it's like, how does this work, right? So uh, utilizes high resolution camera and of course, everyone's favorite buzzword in the entire world, AI. This gun uses a bespoke technology that utilizes a high resolution camera and AI in place of traditional infrared used in light guns of the past. Uh, so this gives you the same intense time-based action you remember on your modern display. Uh, so this thing is uh, its going up on Kickstarter in just a few days if you want to follow it for when it goes live so you can get to get your pre-order in, check it out. I think it's kind of cool. I might get one for the house and just you know mess around with it. What do you guys think? And what is most important is what is one arcade game that you guys would bring back if you could? Like full cabinet, no questions asked. Drop it in the comments because I need to see how many of you remember the real classics. Not only has YouTuber Pro Modding already gotten his hands on the Switch 2, he took it apart piece by piece, and what he found was freaking shocking. Let's check it out. Uh, so yeah, Pro Modding uh, disassembled the Switch 2 already before most people even you know got their hands on it. He's already tearing it apart. Let's see what's under there. Let's take a look at that NVIDIA chip we've heard so much about. Uh, the Nintendo Switch 2 is only just launching and someone already tore it down. This is the Pro Modding YouTube channel. He opened it up, uh, took a look at the new handheld console and showcased that NVIDIA chip in there. You got to, you know, really kind of break down the new console. So the teardown starts with screws on the bottom behind the kickstand, ends up with tower screws on the colored covers on each side of the system where you attach the Joy-Con. A lot of metal shielding on this thing. Uh, pro modding, dispatch that with a few screws. You remove the antenna. You get the cooler out, disconnect the battery, pry off the shielding, and then there it is. The GML X30-A1. The NVIDIA chip. Powering the Switch 2. And if you want to check out every single piece of this thing, obviously check out Pro Modder's full video. He did a great job breaking it down. That being said, you probably shouldn't open your own Switch 2 as you might void your warranty and break your whole thing. Recently, Nintendo updated its end user agreement to note that you can't tamper with uh, the hardware. But guess what? You own it. Do whatever you want with it. This has NVIDIA custom silicon. It's not bleeding edge, but it is a huge step up. This is a big upgrade. Let me know what you guys think about this. Are you upgrading to the Switch 2? It's launched, it's already out, or are you waiting to see how it performs in the wild? Let me know if you're buying, comment down below. Are you buying or passing? I just wanna see where people land on this one. Oh boy, Anthropic is in some hot waters due to allegedly using Reddit to train its AI models without permission. You've been a bad, bad boy, Anthropic. Let's check this out. Reddit is suing Anthropic for allegedly using the site's data to train AI models without licensing it. That's a big no-no. Uh, Reddit is basically saying, hey, Anthropic, do not steal our shower thoughts. Pay us up. This is Reddit's lawsuit, and it's making it the first big tech company to legally challenge an AI model provider over training data practices. So uh, we're just we're just breaking all sorts of new grounds here on the AI side, now on the litigation end of things. Uh, the New York Times has sued OpenAI and Microsoft for trading on its news articles without permission or payment. Meanwhile, Sarah Silverman and other book offers sued Meta for training AI models on their books without approval. And then you've got artists, music publishers. They're like, hey, you're training based off of my video, my audio, my photos. Uh, what is going on? We will not tolerate profit-seeking entities like Anthropic commercially exploiting Reddit content for billions of dollars without any return for the Redditors or respect for their privacy. Notably, Reddit has inked deals with other AI model providers, including OpenAI and Google, that allow these companies to train AI models on Reddit's data and have the site's posts appear in their respective AI chatbots' answers. Now, Sam, Sam Altman, he's got an 8.7% stake in Reddit. So he's a third largest shareholder and once a, memory, a member of the company's board of directors. In the filing, Reddit claims that it approached Anthropic and made it clear that they did not have authorization to scrape the data from Reddit. However, Reddit alleges Anthropic said, I don't care. I'm going to do it anyway. That's what happened. I think word for word. You know, what's wild about this is that this all started after Reddit signed a $60 million licensing deal with Google. And now everyone's kind of trying to get their cut. And I think this lawsuit, especially with it being one of the first in this specific arena, maybe reshape how companies uh, can use AI to train. 
You know, it's not like a free for all internet buffet, so to speak, that those days might be over. Here's what I want to know from you. Uh, do you think Reddit's in the right here or is AI training on public posts just how the internet works now? Let me hear your takes down below. How about that? All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today. We'll see you. I've got more videos coming out the rest of this week. Also, make sure that you hit the like button, subscribe, and uh, leave me a little comment down below. How about that? We'll see you next time.